From Los Angeles to New York City, from Washington, D.C. to right here in Syracuse, hundreds of thousands of people took part in the Women's March over the weekend. Activists march on the one-year anniversary of the inaugural Women's March. Talking Points analyst Galat Malamud is here to, to discuss the movement and what to expect going forward. Galat, thanks so much for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me. Now, what are the major differences between the march this year and last year? Right, you know, the main issues stayed the same. You know, um, right to choose, um, more funding for Planned Parenthood. But really, last year, it was kind of that immediate response to the resistance of the inauguration of Donald Trump. Now it's the one year anniversary of his inauguration, the day the march happened, and it kind of showed that these demonstrators are in it for the long haul to the resistance. It's not just they re resisted him the day he was inaugurated, it's a real resistance movement throughout his presidency. Right, and would you say that it has moved beyond that resistance because of the Me Too campaign and all the issues that surround that? How has that kind of influenced the march this year? Yes, yeah, certainly. The Me Too movement played an integral role in this year's march. We definitely saw more uh, signs and more awareness of sexual harassment at the march. Of course, it was there last year, but even more so this year, uh, the New Jersey uh, First Lady for instance, gave a speech about her own experience with sexual harassment at the New Jersey March. And really, just to show how big of a movement this is in the country, the New York Times, the front page of the New York Times on that day was Allie Raisman's statement at Larry Nassar's sentencing showing that the Me Too movement is not just in this march, it's really taken over the country. And what about the march right here in Syracuse? Was that any different? Yeah, there were over 2,000 people marching downtown, and Colleen Deacon was actually one of the main speakers at that march, of course lost the congressional race to John Kako last year, but she was speaking on behalf of Governor Cuomo's office. And again, the message was the same in Syracuse as it was across the rest of the nation. And in terms of this march going beyond and kind of affecting the political climate, how will the landscape shift after these marches take place? Yeah, well, you know, as we approach the midterm elections a couple months away, that was one of the big messages at this year's march, was that more women need to get elected in Congress. There was actually Sunday, the day following the Women's March in Las Vegas, there was a power to the polls march. It was organized by the founder of the Women's March last year in Washington, trying to get more people elected. And one of the reasons possibly why it was in Las Vegas, Democratic Congresswoman there, Jackie Rosen, running against Dean Heller for his seat in Nevada, a vulnerable Republican seat. We also had Kirsten Gillibrand speaking in Washington about getting more women elected to Congress. Of course, speculation of her making a 2020 presidential run. So really getting women into politics was a big message of this year's march as well. Certainly a very significant movement that we are going to keep our eyes on here. Thank you so much for reporting that, Chris.